The next step in learning to read is learning about <clears throat> all kinds of vocabulary and sounds, um, beginning to recognize words uh, with flashcards. So um, first we start with tangible, tactile experience of just um, a basket of animals. It's a very sensorial experience, F frog, P pig, and you can talk about the sound they make, oink, oink, or whatever, a horse, <laughs> a rat, um, a cow, moo, and a rabbit. And so you can talk about the sounds like r rabbit. And then the next thing, and it's a progression of left to right, top to bottom. So I found this for all of $2.99 at a thrift store. And it's great because you can point to the animal, pull the string, and it, it says the name of it and does the sound. There are zero batteries to this thing. So stay away from digital stuff because it just, it doesn't have longevity, the batteries, and I don't know, the upkeep. The old style is the best style. It has realistic pictures. There's not Walt Disney. I have nothing against Walt Disney, but with young children, you have to stick to the concrete, realistic. They cannot differentiate mentally from fake and real, from fantasy and fiction. So if you stick with the real as you lay their foundation, their mental state will be a heck of a lot better. So basically, um, this is another teaching instrument. It has the words and the picture and the sound. And then moving into um, early books, tactile. This is not realistic. However, it would be for a baby that's just beginning mostly to chew and talk, uh, you know, recognize it's an animal. Um, they're learning more by sound. These are fun because they're tactile books. They have a lot of touch and feel to them and sound. They have a little story in there you can read and you can uh, just basically grow vocabulary. Um, you know, chick and it has furry. So things like that. There are smaller books for traveling and putting in your diaper bag. You know, quack, quack, bah, sheep, duck. And you're you're talking to them. You're, te you're teaching them to duck, quack, quack, you know, that kind of thing. And then there's also plastic ones. When they tee, they're easy to wipe. These are easy to put in the laundry. Um, b boat. So it has capital letters, unfortunately, but it has a boat and it has the word. So these are examples of early reading books you know, that are fun, and these actually look somewhat realistic. Car, c car, b bus, tr truck, c crane. So anyway, those are examples of early reading books. And then I found this at a thrift store. It's pretty cool. You can teach the body parts. Head. Where's your head? Point to your head. Where's your hand? Point to your hand and arm and chest and all the different body parts from this and it's it's movable and fun for the kid to play with and you know make sure that they respect the materials so that they have longevity and if they don't play correctly with it you put it away and wait till they're a little more mature but it can go with this game here it's called head shoulders knees and toes and the parts are um Little game parts. Let me zoom in here. Little game parts that show the actual kids um, doing the motion. And you can teach them the, the song that goes with um, that, and you can Google it. Um, and so it's a game. And again, I found that at, at a secondhand store if you are challenged for budget. Um, keep looking and you can find all kinds of things. So the next step, the second level here, would be a 
sight cards, uh, word cards, beginning words, and I'm going to show you uh, good, better, and best. So these are okay. They're cartoony in nature, but at least they're a little more realistic than most. But you know, they kind of put a human-like fashion to them and give them emotion. But basically, these are good. You can use these cards. There is orange cat, black and white zebras. So it's true to life. It's just a little cartoony. So these are good. They will work. It does not have the word with it on the front, but it does on the back with a big letter. They kind of use capital letters. Uh, sometimes in lowercase letters, but always aim for lowercase letters first. So those are good. These are good. They're still a little bit cartoony. But I kind of like that it has a ring that you can attach them and not lose them. And they're thicker. So these are, are very good because they're you can't uh, easily bend them and they're laminated. But they're still uh, a little bit cartoony in nature. So they're good. They will work. These are another, um, I would say these are good, these are better. But as you go through the cards, you know, um, it just can switch back and forth. Um, for example, this one, I would not want to put this in front of the child. That's ridiculous. That's not going to happen. Um, and so, you know, the sun does not have a face. So, um, just you really, when they're packaged, it's hard to tell, but they're good. They will still work. You know, they have the word on the bottom, c cow, and on the back it has the word. So you can use these when they start to actually write and read. So they have longevity. Now these pictures are better. They're realistic pictures, and they have the word on the back, hose, tent. So I would say these are better. They're realistic pictures. And if you don't want to spend any money, you know, go take the pictures yourself. And, and But you want them to be able to flip through the pictures. And you can always make two for matching if you want to use your own pictures. So these are better. Now, these are best for a young beginning reader. What's awesome is they have a sensorial experience built in. So it looks realistic. It has the word. It has um, what is the name of this vehicle questions that you can ask. It has Spanish, French, German, and Chinese. And then also it has a tactile experience here. It feels like we, uh, tires on this side. And then the ball, it has a tactile experience here. And then again on the back, it has questions you can ask your child and it has other languages that you can teach your child. So I would say this is the best as far as having a tactile experience and it has the name of the adult animal and the baby animal, which is nice. Um, so these have longevity they're fun, they have more learning on the back, so these are the best. A chicken, and then it has like a tactile experience for their legs, tractor. So that's the best. Here's another example, and these do not cost very much, but they have realistic pictures, oops, dropped the lid. Um, realistic pictures, you know, ship, and then on the back, a big word ship, so they can actually learn to, to write it. Um, so these are really good. And I have an entire basket different of different examples. You can get the animals of the world to build vocabulary, shapes and colors. And these are like a dollar at the dollar store. You can get two and do matching games. So I got... Two of the animals of the world, so you can do matching. Colors and shapes. Sight words number one. Sight words number two. Rhyming time. 
U.S. animals. And then it has, this one's really good because it has a lot of facts on the back. So when you teach about feathers, fins, and fur, or, or you know, the United States, it has information about the bald eagle. You know, that kind of thing. Rhyming. This is a go fish game. It's a little cartoony, but it'll work. It looks realistic. You don't have a purple duck. And then um, phonetics uh, or phonics, um, a long A, you know, versus a short A. So you can get, and this was $1. So these are educational things you can buy for your children. Avoid Disney characters or fictional characters on there and make them as realistic as possible. Another thing at the dollar store are these pick up pairs and the box it's really cheap the box kind of fell apart but they have these that you can punch out and they're they're pairs so you can do matching game where you uh, put them all in random and have them matching you can also do the memory game where you put them upside down and you flip over two to see if they match then you flip them back over and you have to remember where they are so these have a lot of uses and it comes with two in one set. So it has animals and then this has architecture. So this would be for an older child and this would be for a, a younger child and you can talk about the, the sounds that the animals make and so on. Next you would move on to lotto games which would be um, you know where you're pairing them up as well with a board. So they usually, a lotto game will have a board, kind of like bingo, but it's called Animal Lotto. So you would match the actual card with the picture, and that's called Lotto. So that would be next in the succession of language and learning. Here's another lotto matching game. This is okay, it will work. This is much, much better. It's realistic, it's concrete, it's actual. You can talk about the sounds of the animals in real life. Um, this cartoon, not realistic. So um, avoid this and go for this. Because when you teach geography, you can actually use this and show where the animals live on a map. You can talk about animal habitats and so on and so forth. So this has longevity. You can use it in all kinds of teaching situations. This, uh, leave it at the store. And this is called Memory Matching Ocean Explorer. So it kind of looks like this. And so you pick one and you look at it. It's an octopus. Okay, so you would pick that one and then pick another one, and it's a fish. They don't match, so you put them back, and then it's the next person's turn. Starfish shell. And when you match, you get to keep it, and you have to remember where they are. So it's called the memory matching game. Extremely important for learning and developing their brain and how to uh, remember. Uh, where things are and so memory matching games of all kinds are excellent you can actually if you have nothing else other than a deck of cards and they know their letters and numbers you can put the cards upside down and play with a deck of cards as long as you have two of each kind present you can do memory matching with that okay so right and then going down to the lower level is next. So I already separated these, but it's puzzle. So this would be for a more advanced kid. So up at the top um, would be a range of, say, you know, these two could be for early, uh, be, uh, so anywhere from six months to, you know, up, however long they're interested in those. And then the books absolutely can keep going through toddlerhood and the heads shoulders knees and toes as long as they're walking and early talking that's a good game for them and then this the picture word cards as, so, as long as they can start to kind of say it back to you 
So I would say, be, you know, uh, probably anywhere from, you know, one year and up, um, depending on your child and their development. So um, these can be used for two years, you know, two years and up. And then down here, this would definitely be uh, more of the two, three, four, because they need to, to actually know at least the lowercase letter. So again, in the method that I teach, the Montessori method, um, you do not teach A to Z. You teach in uh, letter groups of four or three, and the first one is M-A-P-T. So for example, I'm just showing the material, and this is great material. It's wood, it's sturdy, um, and then you just match the picture to the sound. So they need to know, you know, that's an apple, and this is a, ah, and this is the symbol for a. Ah. And so then they can match them together. But you would not put them all until they know all of their alphabet in one uh, piece of work. You would put like four, a group of four. And this is a good fun game. It's left and right. So always teach your child left and right. It's actually the very beginning part of geography is to understand left and right and Western Hemisphere from Eastern Hemisphere and um, day and night. And so this is uh, really good for learning that. They're a little bit cartoony, but they're not far off from reality. So a good game there. This is heads and tails. So again, you can go over animal sounds, where they live. You can verbally talk and grow voc vocabulary with talking to them about what is on the picture. And they need to know, you know, left and right and heads and tails. And this is a sequencing game. It has four scenes. So it, it sh shows the beginning of something the progression, and this only shows three, but, um, so progression is a sequencing card. And so you want to get those for your child so they can see how the progression goes. It's about candles. You know, I'm sure it was lighting a candle, the candle burning, the candle burning out, and so on. So anything to do with sequencing would come after um, what you've seen so far. That would be the next step in the progression. This is a flip book, so you can see how it goes. Here's an apple with a worm. Someone takes a bite out, then they eat the whole thing. Um, and the pictures look realistic for the most part. And it has different types of progression about different topics. And so at the back it says check your answers or check your answers for um, imagine matchup game. But it talks about fruit, instruments, baby animals, sports balls, camping equipment, tools, party supplies, playground equipment, school supplies, bath time. Those are great topics that are in their world that they need to know about. And it says for three and up. But your two-year-old, if you've been teaching them early on, will have the ability to mentally grasp this and be able to function. And that is early educational development for language. I hope that helps.